After making a name for himself in heavy metal, Rob Zombie decided to dip his toes into the wonderful world of Hollywood, where he made House of a Thousand Corpses. Filmed in 2000, released in 2003, written by him, directed by him, was it worth it? my Rob Zombie film series review. In light of the new Monsters movie, which will be available on Netflix and physical media at the end of September, I'm deciding to review every single one of Rob Zombie's movies in chronological order, starting from his first film ever, which is House, to his latest, which is Monsters. So strap in. Thanks for tuning in, guys. I really do appreciate it. The so House of a Thousand Corpses tells the story of two young couples traveling the backwoods of Texas searching for the urban legend of murder, who's then held prisoner by a sadistic backwater family of serial killers. Rob Zombie is one of those directors that's hit and miss with me. I'm not that much of a heavy metal fan per se. I do have three of his songs, Dracula, American Witch, and the very first one I've ever heard from him, Living Dead Girl. Those are awesome, I do admit. But again, I'm not that much in heavy metal, but I really do like those three songs. And I respect the guy, deeply. More about that later in this review. So with House of a Thousand Corpses, was this worthy? Was this exciting? Sorry, emphasis on spoiling. I'm trying so hard not to. <laughs> Starting off with the positives of House of a Thousand Corpses. The opening scene. The opening robbery scene. Jeez, I love that scene to death. I actually looked that scene up years ago on YouTube. I downloaded it on an SD card and a flash drive just so I could watch that scene over and over again. It's just the way it's handled, the way it's filmed, and the wonderful, great Sid Haig, who sadly has passed away from a lung infection back in 2019. It's another one we lost. Sid Haig nailed it in this movie. You know, not only you do, you get a really awesome opening scene that has a great actor in it, in Sid Haig, and it's just the way his whole attitude in this scene is just is priceless. I loved it from the moment that those guys point that gun at his face, at Sid Haig's face. He shrugs everything off. He's condescending. He's really smart assy, and he just plays this part off just awesomely. He plays a character named Captain Spaulding, who's supposedly a part of the members of the family, of the crazy family that is introduced later. He's not in it much, which kind of sucks, because this character is the one lifeline that really does speak to me in this movie. That's pretty much the lifeline that the only reason why I kind of sort of watch this movie. But that scene alone, the whole entire robbery scene, with him telling this robber off, and him giving him the middle finger, and this and that. It, it's priceless. It's like you can tell this is a guy that has nothing to lose. Something screwy with this guy. Again, Sid Haig nailed it. You miserable motherfucker. I ought to jump over this counter and bash your fucking balls in. And I really do wish he was in it more. He's in it, like, sprinkled around, but that's about it. And for my final positive, there's only two kills that was worthwhile in this movie. One, the graveyard stabby stab scene. Two, the fish boy scene. Those scenes was actually pretty decent. If there's anything else positive I can say about this that I can take away from this is those scenes right there. Those are the only kill scenes that remotely interested me, that was remotely interesting, that was remotely worthwhile, just remotely worth a damn. <laughs> just to sum it all up. Because after that, yeah. Because unfortunately, after that, the movie just tabs downhill. It, it just... It just wasn't good after this. It just wasn't good after that. Ugh. I hate to say that, but it's true. It's true. 
I wish I could put more positive spin on this, but from here on out, let's get into the negatives and it's a wapeful. The film was abysmal to look at. And I really want to be fair about this because this is Rob Zombie's first outing. You gotta start somewhere. But it was abysmal to look at. The way it was shot and whenever the kids get introduced and they go to the house, you see all these dumbass transition shots. That's just completely useless, completely pointless. You see a shot of the house and then you see a character committing necrophiliac. You don't know what it's trying to do and it's like, do we really need all those shots? It just makes it look stupid and just all out cartoonish. Just nothing stood out. Nothing about any of this stood out, especially after that robbery beginning scene. If anything, it took away from the scares and added on to the cheesiness and the all out silliness that this movie just brought out. It wasn't really that scary. I mean, it tried, I guess, if I were to put another positive spin, but I really can't because I can't lie. It just frustrated me. It didn't do anything. It was unsatisfactory, completely pointless, to the point where you're like, what the hell am I watching? Just, what the hell am I, what the hell am I watching? Not to mention the characters. I'm sorry, what characters? You get just a bunch of panty waste, nonsensible idiots. Every bad decision as cooked up, it's just right from the start. After they meet the family, then they try to escape. And there are so many things that they could have done to prevent them from being captured. Of course, you wouldn't have a movie otherwise. I know, da da da. Still, it's, it's logic. And I know you're supposed to throw out logic in some scenarios, but when it's that obvious, they could have just drove right past it and they could have just ignored all the weird things that was going on. And they were already in the car. They had the pedals in the middle, but the one character just had to get out and say, I gotta open the gate. Just crash through it, dude. What are you doing? Why are you stopping? I gotta open the gate. Quick, hurry up. Stop. 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 <laughs> Plus, you have this whole scene at the end where the supposed main girl escapes. Where she could have done things differently in that scenario. It just led her capture again, which leads me to think... You know, what was the point of that? If that's where they were going to go, and that's how dark that they were going to go, what was the point? <laughs> I know some people might not have minded that as much, but it's just so many things that happened in this movie. It was just, it didn't really make sense, and it just really frustrated me to the point to where I wanted to pull my hair out. Just, <sighs> plus, what was the deal with these, I guess I would call them, grade freaks? To where the girl gets lowered down in the coffin, and then they start attacking her as a way of, I guess, helping her escape, and then they stop. When you were really expecting them to kill both of them, well, they snatched the guy up, but the girl, it's like, yeah, okay, we don't care about you. What? What was the point of that? Ugh, this movie. We've already established how screwy this family is, how screwy Sharon Moon's character was, and the mother, and obviously Bill Mosley's character and all them. Everybody in this family was screwy. That was obvious. Yet you still choose to challenge them. To curse them. To piss them off. You know, the lady calls Sharon Moon Zombie's character every name of the book. Not a very smart move, honey. Not just, not smart at all. You know, that's just common sense. Which is a concept that was clearly lost in this. Like I said, Sid Haig was the only lifeline in this movie. And because he wasn't in it fully, it just fell apart for me. It, nothing worked after that first scene. <laughs> That's why I'm saying, just look up that robbery scene on YouTube, download it. You'll have a better time watching that than the whole, the whole entire movie because it just falls apart right after that. Sharon Moon Zombie. Oh. Rob Zombie has a definite reputation for putting his wife in every single freaking movie that he does. Now, I do respect that. I respect 
that they love each other so much that they trust each other and that they can work well with each other. I get it. I, I really do get it. But you don't have to put your wife in every single movie because this woman cannot act. She just came across as awkward every time. Every single freaking time. <laughs> Maybe that's the type of character they were going for for this woman, but... <sighs> Again, it just added to the cheesiness. You know, where's my block of cheese? I feel like I need to eat cheese throughout this whole entire film review. <laughs> she can't act. I didn't find her remotely interesting other than the fact that she is gorgeous. She's a little hot, but moving on. <laughs> no excuse. No excuse. She just came off as invasive, and she just felt like she was trying a little too hard. Give me a B. Give me an A. Give me a B. Give me a Y. What's that spell? What's that spell? What's that spell? <laughs> but I digress. The dialogue was weak, and it's kind of abysmal at a point to where it just got too much sometimes. Though it wasn't as heavy in this, it was his first outing, it gets on much worse throughout the series. Still. You know, Rob Zombie as a director, I think he's fine. But as a writer, he needs a little bit of help. He needs a little bit of in initiative. <laughs> it just got too much to handle at some point. It went a little hardcore with some of the subject matter, so much so that it just got too much. It just felt a little off. And it just didn't really do that much. Just saying, it could have pumped the brakes a little bit. And that's another trend that will unfortunately be mentioned throughout this whole entire film review series. The pacing of the film was so abysmal. This movie clocks in at an hour and 28 minutes. Felt like freaking two hours. There was a scene where the cops go to this family to question these people about the missing kids. Along with the father of one of the missing kids for the movie. And right when they discovered the tool shed of bodies, they get dealt with. And then they decide to go with a shot where Bill Mosley goes over to Walt Goggins' character, points a gun at his head, and there's a drone shot that lasts what seems like five minutes. I honestly thought my Blu-ray player was messing up. It was freezing, skipping, or something. I thought it was... Ruined. I thought the Blu-ray itself was ruined, or my player was ruined. I didn't know what was going on. I was like halfway on my feet, on the way to the Blu-ray player to like tap it to see what was going on, and it finally went on. And I was thinking, wait, they actually shot it that way? Ooh, this movie. The direction was tamed, yes, I just said that Rob Zombie is fine as a director, but in this, in all fairness, if this was his first outing, but I just didn't feel like the direction worked for me. It didn't feel like there was much of a point. There was not much of a motive for what any of the characters was doing. It just gave no sense of purpose of what was actually going on, where things was actually going. It just felt moot at a certain point. This movie just was not enjoyable. Like I said, watch that first scene. Watch that opening scene. Thank me later and just don't worry about the rest. It just goes all down the hill from then on out. Because by the end, you're left hollow inside. You're left with many questions and you're, you're thinking to yourself, or at least I thought to myself, what the hell was the point of this? I mean, that opening scene, if the whole entire movie was like that, I wouldn't have mind. <laughs> this movie just didn't cut it for me. It wasn't the best start for Rob Zombie, but again, you gotta start somewhere. You gotta build up. You gotta build from the ground up somewhere. Rob Zombie is not much one to care. He's one of those that, when he sets out to do something, it's his own, and damn the opinions. It's his own movie. He makes what he wants to make. And I commend him for that. I respect him for that. Good for you, buddy. So little guys like me, yeah, you probably just shrug it off. And I, again, I respect it. But even he admitted to this particular movie, to House of the Thousand Corpses, that he, it just didn't turn out the way he wanted. It really wasn't his best. He admitted this. I'll look this up on IMDb. Just go on IMDb and you'll, you'll find it in the trivia area. But even he admitted that this just was not good. It wasn't his best. He did regret doing it and it just was not good. He put it a certain way, but again, look it up on IMDb. 
But again, hey, you got to start somewhere, right? As bad as I trashed this movie already, and I'm already starting to feel guilty, but not really. <laughs> you got to start somewhere. You got to start somewhere. And we're only at the beginning of this film series review, so here's hoping there's some more positive views I could throw out to future movies of his in this series. The movie just wasn't cutting it for me. It just wasn't that good. Other than the robbery scene at the beginning and the awesome Sid Haig, it's a swing and a miss. And I will reiterate this, and this will be the last time because I've beaten a dead horse by this point. Go watch that robbery scene. You'll be satisfied. Just don't worry about the rest. God, I really do love that scene. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm done now. I'm done now. <laughs> House of a Thousand Corpses. What was your thoughts on it? Were you a fan? Did you get any enjoyment out of this? Or, like me, did you just not? Did you find it a little too cartoonish? and just no point whatsoever leave me a comment down below and give me your thoughts thank you so much guys for watching this video i really wish it could have been a little cheerier better look next time thank you so much guys for watching this video i really do appreciate it like subscribe comment and share and also click that bell icon so you don't miss a thing and i will see you on the next one peace